kissing her with all me arms. But they don't give a monkey's down at the HSS, and they've gone and half me pension for a start. So it won't be very long before I'm by her side, but I'll probably starve to death, that's what I'll do. For richer or poor, I'm bloody I'm poor, poor and that's a fact. fact. That's causing sickness and in health, I said i will do. What day is it? What day is it? What do you mean, what day is it? Wednesday. No, I know what today is. But what do you ask for? No. I mean, what day is it that you do your jury work? Next week. What day? Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Today week! Today is Wednesday, then. Are you sure? This is it, I just told you, ain't I? Mm. Just that. No, you bloody well done. I thought it was Thursday. Well, if it is, this paper's a day early. I've got news here that ain't even happened yet. <laughs> I thought you said you knew what day it was. I do, I do. I thought yesterday was Wednesday. Not until tomorrow, my dear. <laughs> and I did all that rushing about yesterday cos I thought it was early closing. Well, now you can do it all again today because today is early closing. No, I've got all I want now, but it is annoying, because if I'd known yesterday... If I'd known yesterday was Tuesday, I could have gone to the church bazaar, cos I was really looking forward to that. You couldn't have been looking forward to it that much, else you'd have remembered to go to it. No, I did remember to go to it. Not on Tuesday, you didn't. Oh, yes, I did, but there was nobody there. It wasn't open. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do Monday? Comes after Sunday. <laughs> Well, I know where Monday comes. I just can't seem to remember having one this week. Well, not a proper Monday. Because I thought Tuesday was Monday, see? That's why I went to the church bazaar. And there was nobody there. Well, of course not, silly. It was the wrong day. <laughs> <laughs> so you've lost a day? No, I've gained one. I thought yesterday was Wednesday and today was Thursday. But it's not. Today is Wednesday, so it's Thursday again tomorrow. So I get two Thursdays in this week. <laughs> No Monday. Oh, yes, but I don't mind missing Monday. I've never been keen on Mondays. Um, and I can always do with an extra Thursday. See, it's a much better day for me, cos I always know more where I am on a Thursday. And with an extra Thursday, I mean, it gives me more time to press your suit. Hey? Well, Thursday is my ironing day, see? And I didn't think I'd get through all this today, but now I've got tomorrow as well. <laughs> <laughs> Look, when they get her out of brain transplants, you put in for one, right? <laughs> because you are entitled. Look, there's so many, only so many days in a year, right? If you say so. No matter what I say so, it's facts, isn't it? And they're all numbered and put into months and weeks, right? Well, that's not new. No, it's not new. It's been going on for a long time, my dear. Yeah, as long as I can remember. Which is not saying very much, but never mind. <laughs> you can't lose any one of them days. Yeah, but I didn't say I'd lost one. You said I'd lost one. I said I'd gain one. You can't gain one, neither. There's only so many days. And they're all numbered, like I said. Look, do you know how many days there are in a year? Seven. Seven? <laughs> <laughs> you silly great pudding this. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. That's seven. Wrong! Can you think of any others? There's 365! No, 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 that's just the same old seven. You know, repeated all over again every week. Because <laughs> nobody else could think of any more either, I suppose. Well, it's just as well, because it'd be a funny week if there wasn't any more. Not half as funny as the week you've been having. Yes. <laughs> besides, seven days in a week is enough for anyone. Except an extra Thursday in this week will come in handy for pressing your suit. Except I ought to wait and press it next week if you want to look really smart for the jury. Look, it's criminals I'll be sitting in judgement on. And you think I've got to dress up and look smart for them? Well, it won't just be criminals, will it? The judge will be there and the lawyers. I mean, you want to look smart for the judge, don't you? I'm not going to tea with them, are It's not a social visit. Besides, I'll be sitting in a jury box. It only shows head and shoulders. Clean collar, that's all I need. Do you know who the criminals are yet? Of course I don't. They don't tell you that. Could be a bunch of cutthroats and murderers for all I know. And I've got to sit there in full view. Just 
Just head and shoulders, you see. Yeah, but that's... That's <laughs> enough for them, isn't it? That's the bit they ought not to show. I mean, show them your bottom half, yeah, let them know you're there, but the face should be hidden at all times. They should either blindfold a prisoner or hide the jury. Yeah, but the judge has got to sit there too. I mean, he'll be in full view and the prosecuting counsel. They're in disguise, my dear. They're wearing wigs and gowns, aren't they? <laughs> you wouldn't recognise them if you saw them outside in the street. Well, can't you wear a wig and shave off your moustache? <laughs> Besides, it's their job, isn't it? And they'll be earning a bloody sight more of it than I will too. I mean, it's fair. I mean, they've got to work in a car, don't they? With a police escort. Or even a prisoner gets driven there in a police van. I've got to go on a bus and come back on a bloody bus. Well, I pay your fare. I've got a bus pass. I don't need them to pay my fare, do I? You get expenses. Expenses? Expenses? Seven pound ten p for, for, for ten hours or over. That's under a pound an hour. Well under, that is. Blimey. They're the ones who need a trade union if anybody does. A poor bloody jury. It's worse than a sweatshop, that is. And no talk about danger money. Oh, no. There's the judges and your barristers, all the legal eagles. They're coining it, they are. Living in their mansions, driving around in bloody great Rolls Royces. The poor bloody jury's got to risk life and limb for a pittance. I mean, supposed to be a court of justice. Well, where's the justice in that, eh? Answer me that. I mean... Bloody legal profession, they ought to get down on their hands and knees that have got any sense of justice at all and give thanks to the Lord who's given them all them villains. <laughs> they make a bloody sight more out of crime than your poor bloody criminal does. I mean, it's no wonder they give them all light sentences. They don't want your criminal sitting in prison twiddling his thumbs, no. They want him out in the streets working. No wonder they're against capital punishment. Well, it stands to reason, doesn't it? They don't want all their best clients top, do they? No. Get a nice, juicy murder trial going. What are you laughing, <laughs> isn't they? Eh? Oh, dear, oh, Lord. They can buy themselves another house in the south of France. That's why the police, that's why the police are so keen to fit people up. Because they're in on it, too. They get a commission off the lawyers, don't they? <laughs> I'm not sticking my neck out in that bloody courtroom, not for what they're paying me. Jury has to work just as hard as all the rest of them. Puts in the same hours. It's got to sit there, sift the evidence, weigh up your pros and cons, give the verdict, and we shall be on the same whack as all the others. Yeah, fair's fair. I mean, I could be sitting there giving out my guilty verdicts, and then them or their mates could be round here bashing the door down after me. Well, we don't want any of that. I mean, Mr Johnson says he knows a jury man once he got both his legs broken by the villains and that was before the case even started. <laughs> well, thank God we still got that wheelchair. <laughs> the trouble with your courts, Mr Garnet, is they let too many people off. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're not guilty... No, it shouldn't matter. It's up to the police to secure a conviction by every means in their power. What, even fit someone up? Yeah, if they have to. I mean, it's better if they've got the guilty person, but if they haven't, they shouldn't let it bother them. <laughs> what, convict an innocent man? If they have to. I mean, the whole purpose of your criminal code is to deter people from committing crime. And the only way to do that is to put the fear of punishment at people for breaking the law. Let them know that if a crime has been committed, someone is going to be punished. It doesn't matter whether it's the person who's done that particular crime or not. That's immaterial. I mean, hanging an innocent person is as good a deterrent as hanging a guilty one. And that is what I say, why there should be capital punishment. Because if a murder has been done, it's better to hang the wrong person than to hang nobody. <laughs> That's true, I mean, but the people that they arrest and imprison or hang, I mean, they should be from your criminal classes, though. Oh, wherever possible, I would say. Right. You mean there should be a section of society they can draw on for that sort of thing? Yeah. yeah. Now, there's a good idea. Yeah, right. like, like I mean, your louts, your football hooligans. Yeah, your animals, your good for nothing. Yeah, all that sort. Their names should be taken and put on a list. And then when a crime is committed, you go to that list and one of them gets punished for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, but it's supposed to be fair, though, isn't it? Justice, isn't it? Uh, justice and law and order are two different things, Arthur. Yeah. There is nowhere where it says that law and order has to be fair. 
And listen, if your citizen goes out of his way to be law-abiding, makes every effort to keep his nose clean, he's got every chance in the world of steering clear of the law. But if, on the other hand, he ain't too fussed about being law-abiding, then he's got an equal chance of having his collar felt. And it don't matter whether he's done this particular crime or not. That should be purely academic. The whole point is, we need a criminal, and we got one. We need someone to punish, and we have found him. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, there is a criminal class, Arthur. You can see them all round you. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. I mean... Well, I mean, you, there's people you wouldn't trust, Arthur. Well, most, Arthur, yeah. I mean, not a lot of people I would trust. There is a criminal type. Of course there is. You can see them. I mean, you look around and say, hey, oh, there goes one, there's another. Shouldn't have to wait for them to do anything. No, well, there you are. That slows down the criminal process. There was a time when the police would arrest them on suspicion. They'd see one lurking in the doorway. They're right inside, three months for sus. Yeah, why did they stop that, Mr. Bloody Lee? liberals. Yeah, trying to be fair to the criminal. Why be fair to a criminal? He ain't fair to us. Right. Yeah, well, that's all very well, but, I mean, the, the, the police are supposed to serve the public, not judge them. I mean, the public pay their wages. I mean, if you employ somebody to work for you, you don't expect that person to turn around and start bullying you and telling you what to do, do you? The bloody trade unions do, mate. No, they don't. <laughs> and they are there to protect their members against the employers. Get off out of it. First thing the union leader does, as soon as he takes office, is to raid the union funds, buy himself a bloody big house and a bloody big car to go with it. <laughs> I mean, when did you ever see a poor union leader, eh? When did you ever see a union leader that didn't earn more than the members he's supposed to be representing? I thought we were talking about the police. No, we're talking about bloody criminals, mate. Oh, so you are saying that the union leaders are criminals? I am saying that all the union leaders ought to be on that list, what Mr Johnson is talking about. People to be watched. People not mm. to be trusted because they are a dodgy bunch. <laughs> because if they're not watched, Arthur, yeah. they'll rob and exploit their members worse than the bloody employers. Well, I've seen them. They start on a soapbox and finish up in the House of Lords. <laughs> look at that, look at that bloke you had, the leader of your bloody union. <laughs> he, he done better out of it than the bloody capitalist he was supposed to be up against. And don't tell me he didn't have his hand in a few tools, including his own union's till. Oh, blimey. Money don't grow on trees, Arthur. So where did all his wealth come from, eh? Answer me that, eh? <laughs> Every barrel's got his rotten apples, Yeah, they're all on the top in a union barrel, mate. That's the trouble. <laughs> There are two groups of people in this world. Those who do, and those who it's done to. What you've got to try and do is join the first group. And you're trying to make the police join the first group? They're the ones that do it, and we're the ones they do it to? No. You are saying that you employ the police to get a criminal. If they go and get a criminal, one of us will do. Well, well, not one of us, Arthur. If you're law-abiding, you're going to be all right. I mean, do the police bother you? No, if you're respectable, you're right. I mean... They've got their funny ways, the police, yeah. The police stop that young colour boy coming out of your house. Yeah, well, they was just being watchful, that's all. I mean, he, he was coming out of my house, Arthur, you know, and carrying a bag. He wasn't doing anything wrong. No, but he might have been, that's their point. Yeah, but they don't stop Mrs Ollenbury or you coming out of your house carrying a bag. No, well, we live there, don't we? Well, he lived there, then. <laughs> no, but, I mean, he, he looked suspicious, didn't he? They all do. <laughs> The blackies. <laughs> <laughs> he was black, wasn't he? I mean, that's nothing against Winston. Yeah. I mean, you know, he was all right. He was a good lad, very honest in his way. But, I mean, he counts against them around here, doesn't he? Well, that's prejudice, ain't it? No, it's not prejudice. I've, I'll give him a room in my house, didn't I? But you have got to be cautious. I mean, you, you've still got to be watchful. I mean, I'll walk past the dog, all right. I mean, most of them's tame enough. But you still tread with caution, don't you? Because they... I mean, dogs do bite. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? Because you'll be on the jury next week. You'll be able to put some of them away for us, won't I you? I will, I will. I'll oh, put yeah. them all away, don't you worry. <laughs> Only the criminals, yeah. only the ones I'm convinced is criminals, but... See, the jury shouldn't have to sit there in full view of everybody. That's my point. I mean, no, you should be able to look at a prisoner through a peephole in the cell door. I mean, study him, you know, be fair. And, I mean, you know... Give him a good looking over, listen to what the police has got to say, why they nicked him, why they think he should go inside, pass sentence. But there's no need for the jury to sit there where they can be seen. It's not fair to them. Wait. 
I've been listening to you lot talking. Before you start slagging off the criminal classes... I wasn't. Motor mouth here was. <laughs> but all I said I was... I heard what you said, I heard what you said, and you want to mind your P's and Q's a bit. Listen, we're not all criminals round here, but a lot of us have got relations who are. You could cause offence. You want to show some respect for people's feelings. Look, I've got two cousins on Dartmoor. And when I come in here for a quiet drink, I don't want to listen to you blackening their names. That's right. A couple of lovely lads they are. <laughs> Boys you can be proud of. I am. The eldest. He started a riot a few weeks ago. <laughs> I, see him, I see him on the telly. <laughs> here, wasn't he looking well? Been out on the roof, hadn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Standing up for prisoners' rights, that's what he was doing. A lot of shop steward he is now. You see... What you don't realise, Mr Garnet, is boys like them two lads and Mr Carey's, they provide a service for the poor, nicking things and selling them cheap. Look, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have my brand new Japanese telly and videotape machine. Some wouldn't even have food. The criminal classes you were slagging off just now do more of a service for the poor and needy than the DSS do. Ah, rubbish. Risk life and limb, liberty and freedom, them lads do. Robin Hood and his merry men, <laughs> robbing the rich and... and flogging it off cheap to the poor. <laughs> I always say there wouldn't be any criminals if, if there wasn't any market for your stolen goods. That's right. Yeah. That is right, Arthur. It's people like Mr Garnet and Freddie are what encourage them lads to steal. I don't buy stolen goods. You would if it was offered. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble with our old age pension is you can't even afford to buy cheap stolen goods. Yeah. And uh, you don't want to talk, Mr Johnson. I mean, you wouldn't have that nice new suit and them six brand new uh -huh. shirts if it wasn't for our local heroes. Oi, hey, <laughs> is that one of them shirts you've got on there now? Yeah, but that, that suit had to be taken in. Well, not much. It was nearly a good fit. But I gave him the measurements. God, they got no time to go looking for measurements. <laughs> Marvellous, eh? You can't please no one. That suit would have cost you three times as much if you bought it in the shop what they nicked it out of. Receiving? He ought to go down too if he's caught. You've never received Mr Garnet? Not ever. Get off. I haven't, as he is my witness. Uh, 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 careful, you've had stolen goods off of me, Mr Garnet. Lies. When you was blackmailing... Blackmail? My two lads wouldn't do a thing like that. That's a filthy crime, that is. Filthy? It's despicable. When you was blackmailing <laughs> me over that lady at 47 Carlisle Street, remember? Hey? Yes, he was cleaning windows. And he poked his nose through a window what he shouldn't have been looking through. Well, I didn't know them goods were stolen. Well, you don't I? think I paid for them, do you? Anyway, it don't make no difference now, because I've given her the elbow. So you won't be receiving any more. It really upsets me, you know. The way he goes on about people you know, love and respect, decent people, friends and neighbours. There's no loyalty around here anymore. Of course there ain't. Not like it was in the old days. The police used to have to walk the street in threes in the old days. That's right, that's right. And only on the main streets. Not even the bravest had ventured down the back streets. And anyone caught grassing, ho, ho, ho. Oh, they soon learned them a lesson. <laughs> and blackmail? Duh. The prisons today are full of innocent people. Innocent? Yes, and I'll tell you for why. Because they're prejudiced against as soon as they're born. Well, that depends who they are. Of course it, it don't. Of course it bloody it does. does. Listen, all they have to be is poor or working class. It's a lot better now than it used to be. Ah, yes. And that's because of your blacks. I mean, they've relieved the problem a bit, yeah. God bless them. But if they was to go back home, it'd be back on us. The people, we'd be getting the cosh again, wouldn't we? Eh? I mean, you'd only have to <coughs> step outside your front door and bang. Oi, what have you got in that bag? That's quite right. I'm not for your blackies in the normal way, but I must admit, things have got fairer for us since they arrived. Of course. You know what I mean? Something's amiss. There's one of them there. They look at him first. They grab them for preference. Oh, I'm not complaining. Of course you're not. I mean, it's nice to have someone lower or down the scale. I mean, it's better for us. It takes the pressure off. It gives you breathing space. Not if there's too many of them, it don't. <laughs> <laughs> it stops the old Bill getting on our backs. I mean, before they arrived, it was always us. Prison was empty, it was us they filled him with. I mean, come out of work, have your collar felt, 
And you'd be inside. Not if you're honest, that's my point, that's what I'm saying. Not if you're honest. Yeah. Not if you're honest, Mr Garnet. What about poor old Ginger Noakes? Honest as the day is long. He was nabbed, they found him guilty, put him inside for nine months. He was guilty! Only according to them, only on their evidence. Yeah, he reckoned he was fitted up. Of course he was. He reckoned they had it in for him. Of course they did. I mean, why did they stop him? Why did they stop him coming out the docks? They was watching him! But that's it, ain't it? <coughs> why? Yeah. Why was they watching an innocent man? Innocent man? God blimey, when they stopped his car, the boot was full of stuff. Well, that may be, but that's the point. An innocent man stopped and searched. Why? He was suspected. They was watching him. He, he was under surveillance. Ah, but why? That's what Harry's saying. He is an innocent man, honest as the day is long, not a blemish on his character. And they stopped and searched him. And the boot of his car was full of stolen goods. But they never knew that when they stopped him. They when they stopped him, he was an innocent man yeah, without a stain or a whisper against him. He wasn't a criminal. Look, they stopped him because the front wheels of his car was off the ground <laughs> with a weight of the stuff that was in the bloody boot, for crying out loud. He couldn't drive the car, it was so overloaded. He had four sides of beef in there, <laughs> two sides of bacon, sacks of sugar, whiskey, gin. You had whiskey off him. <laughs> oh, I thought that was come by honest. What a quid a bottle. All his customers knew it was stolen. Oh, I think it's a crime. Of course, of course it is. No, I mean, stopping innocent people, honest, hard-working men with not a stain on their character, being stopped, innocent men being treated like criminals. Look, the police was on the gate stopping and searching people because they knew that stuff was being nicked. My brother-in-law was nobbled by the bloody dock police. He used to fill his water container, you know, for the windscreen washers. He used to fill it every day with a bottle of scotch, a bottle of gin, everything that was going. Had a little bar in his front room. Always full it was. <laughs> Had many a party there. Went on for years, he did. Then suddenly, one day, he's coming out the dock gates and it starts raining. So, of course, without thinking, he turns his wipers on, 100% proof rum all over his windscreen. <laughs> Not funny. Not funny, <laughs> is it? And that's not stealing, I suppose. Perks, Alf. Perks. Get no old. wages. Perks. It's very funny. <laughs> you know, one of my cousins, that eldest boy, oh, yeah, yeah. he almost became a policeman. Broke his mother's heart, it did, but he told her what he wanted to be. Your father will turn in his grave, she said, if you become a policeman. Bring disgrace on the whole family. I tried to console it, you know, I should do it. I said, don't worry. If he does become a policeman, it'll be a bent one. So that's not too bad, is it? <laughs> Elf is on jury service. Oops. Yeah, that won't make him too popular, will it? They don't like him much round here anyway. In the docks in the old days, he'd never nick anything. Wouldn't turn his head whilst we did. I was a foreman! You was untrustworthy! That's what you was. Nasty type. Sort of man I don't like to be seen with. Yeah. Well, you want to watch the way you vote on that jury, Mr Garnet. Especially if they're local lads. Know what I mean? Yes, how a bit of more of the community spirit, Mr Garnet. Just for a change. Think of your neighbours and their relatives. And tell those other jurors of yours, them young lads in the docks are nearly always innocent and wrongfully arrested. And the ones that want to convict them are liars. Ticklish business, that sitting on a jury. I don't think I'd fancy it. Uh, you don't want them sort of people bearing a grudge against you. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Ollenberry! <laughs> Golden Bennett, how long did it take to press a pair of bloody trousers? <laughs> Mrs. Ollenberry! What do you want? I want my trousers, then I'm freezing to death standing here. God, bro, I've got to go out, haven't I? There you are. It's the last time I'm pressing those. When did you have them cleaned last? I don't send things to the cleaners. They ruin them. Knock all the stuffing out of them, don't I? Stuffing? There's years of dirt ingrained in those. They might manage to get some of that out, but I doubt it. They stink! Oh, yeah? Yeah, I've had, um, to, I've had to open all the windows upstairs. Oh, yeah? yeah? Look, well, I've been wearing these for years, haven't I? And nobody's ever complained before, have they? No, nobody's ever put our iron on them before. All the steam was revolting. <laughs> we are now going to get some funny looks in the court today. <laughs> You're bloody right, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Look! 
put the creases on the wrong way round! <laughs> you silly mate, fat pudding! And you're a stinker! A what? smelly cat stinker! You what? They'll probably disqualify you from sitting on the jury. Not because your creases are in the wrong place, but pong! I mean, the prisoner won't say I object to that juror because the creases in his trousers are the wrong way round. But he will say, I object to that juror because of the pong, Your Honour! <laughs> Clear the court, the judge will say, and fumigate that juror! You! You! Come here! Come here! Reunion, is it? Home guard? F right, F right, F right. Steady the buff! <laughs> what a smell. <laughs> She'd be following us around. <laughs> it was on the bus. <laughs> I've got a couple of nephew of walking along. <laughs> or perhaps I trod in something. <laughs> Here. You ain't trod in anything, have you? No! <laughs> She's made a good job of those, that Mrs. Olenbury, if she pressed them the right way round. <laughs> made me look a bloody clown, she yeah. is. I only need a red nose. Hello, hello, hello. I say, I say, I That's say. not funny, Arthur! <laughs> oh, God, here, look at this. Here's one of your villains. I wonder what they got on him. I don't know. Nasty looking sod, isn't he? <laughs> I wouldn't like to fall out with him. Oh, vicious looking swine. I ought to look him up and throw away the key, people like that. Ah, good morning, Superintendent. <laughs> I don't like these places, Elf. They make you feel so small and vulnerable, don't they? I wouldn't like to sit on a jury and have to send someone to prison. Too bloody risky, isn't it? I wouldn't like a bloody villain having a grudge against me. You don't call me any bloody prison! I'm gonna get out! And I'm gonna get the judge and the jury! I'm gonna kill them all! The jury! There's no prison built that can hold me! I'm gonna kill the jury! Silence in court. The court will rise. The court may be seated. Yeah.